Now, if you want your child to get on, you must focus on them intensely from the moment they're born. But the theory that you've got to shape their development by the age of three is under attack. It's now being claimed that the fevered attentions of anxious parents, the nuclear physics classes after nursery and the rest, may be unnecessary. The suggestion is, of course, a great comfort to every run-ragged parent in the land. But is it true that benign neglect could be as helpful as eager intervention? Life's busy enough as a toddler. There's walking and talking to be mastered and a crushing weight of parental ambition to be carried. For those short years at the start of life are said to be crucial for social and academic development. Studies by neuroscientists measuring activity in the brain have provided the foundation for early years intervention by the state. The last government pioneered this focus with initiatives including the Sure Start program and an early years curriculum. The coalition government has continued to advocate an early years approach. On the cover of one report was this photograph of two brains, suggesting there was no doubt how vital early intervention was. The report cited studies claiming that a child's development score at a mere 22 months could serve as an accurate predictor of educational outcomes at 26 years. It also suggested that boys judged at the age of three as being at risk had two and a half times as many criminal convictions at age 21 as those deemed not at risk. But tomorrow a conference at the University of Kent will call into question the focus on this early years strategy. They want less government intervention at this age and suggest it's time parents calm down about the importance of childhood. Well, with us now is Ellie Lee, Director of Parenting Studies at the University of Kent, who's helping organise that conference, and the psychologist Oliver James joins us from Oxford. Why do you think this emphasis uh, on the first years is wrong? Well, it's a very old prejudice, so that's the first thing to say. So it certainly predates anything that anybody says they've found out recently. It's at least 300 years old. Um, I think that what's gone on more recently, though, is that there is an increasingly uh, moralistic dynamic um, to claims about the early years. So increasingly shrill claims are made that if parents don't heed by um, what's said, then really terrible things will happen to their children. Neither and it's of which assertions demonstrates that it is wrong. Well, the claim about neuroscience, I think, is absolutely entirely wrong. So mm. there is no new neuroscience which but tells us that if parents don't do various things with really little children, mm. then their brains are going to be shrunk. I mean, that is just utter rubbish. It's an unwarranted claim. And as people will discuss at our conference, it's better understood as neuro-nonsense or neuromania. Um, than any sensible argument uh, okay. about anything that's Oliver James, what do you make of this? Uh, I, I don't even understand why we're discussing this on Newsnight. It's a completely accepted fact by people who have actually read the evidence, which Dr. Lee quite obviously hasn't, that the quality of care that you have in the early years is critical for how you turn out in adult life, and particularly for your emotional development. And if you just look at uh, Dr. Lee at, say, page 335 of my book, They F You Up, <laughs> you'll see 30 studies which show quite clearly and without question that the earlier that damage is done, that is, the earlier a child is maltreated, not loved, abused, neglected, the earlier it is neglected, the more likely it is to suffer all sorts of emotional problems in later life. And take, for example, a study of 800 children which showed that if there was maltreatment between 0 and 3, the outcomes were that much worse than if the maltreatment was between 3 and 6 or right. than if it was between 6 and 9. Now, have you read any of these studies, Dr. Lee? Going on about the neuroscience uh, okay. is completely irrelevant. Right, right. Well, listen, have you read these studies? Yes, I've read plenty of them, and there's plenty say one thing, plenty say the other. And my no, perception no, no, of it. That's no, that's not true. Hang on a sec. Name one study hang, that hang, shows. Hang. Name one study that doesn't. that contradicts the contention just, that just, the early years are more hang. important. Name okay. one can, can study. I say just, just name one study that contradicts. 
Or well, Uncle James's assertion. There's, there's plenty of studies. So, for example, if he reads Jerome Kagan, he'll find plenty of arguments no, against Jerome what's being Kagan said. Argues, can but he can is I not say something that or not? Is not a no? Okay. This, <laughs> my my argument about this and my perception of, of the research is it's like lots of areas of research where there's plenty of different findings and we can have a perfectly reasonable debate but I think the thing that's happened in this area which is why I say it's acquired an increasingly moralistic dynamic is that certain advocates like Oliver James have become increasingly shrill and increasingly one-sided in the way that they're posing things because what they're really trying to do is to turn research into a kind of battering ram to convince parents to do what they think but they should the do. And I actually think if the research demonstrates parents, one thing, surely it's his it, duty to... It doesn't demonstrate one thing. And, you know, studies are studies, and we can have a debate about where, what various studies say, and that's a reasonable discussion to have. What isn't reasonable is to one-sidedly turn this into a crusade and to override the idea that parents have an entirely legitimate right and a legitimate interest um, in deciding for themselves about various aspects of how they conduct their family life, like, for example, whether or not to put a child into daycare. Now, Oliver James is uh, currently on a crusade against mothers putting their children in daycare. He can say what he wants about studies. Some studies say one thing, some studies say the other. I think that in the normal run of family life, then you should let, let parents decide what they think is best for themselves. Let them relax about all of this and do what they feel makes most sense in terms of their work-life balance and in terms of conducting ordinary, everyday family life and, and getting things to fit together. Oliver James, would you be... And it's just really got out of control Would you be willing to let morning. parents relax? Absolutely. I'm all in favour of parents relaxing and indeed letting them do what they want to do, which survey after survey shows is look after their children and love them. And Dr. Lee, who clearly hasn't read these studies, she says there are all these different studies which have diff conflicting views, absolute yeah. rubbish. She hasn't read the studies. If you had read them, Dr. Lee, you would know that they clearly show that the early years are critical in setting the electrochemical thermostat for the rest of your life. And that's why it should be the basis of government policy. When Gordon Brown was uh, trying to bail out the banks, he kept on saying, we'll do whatever it takes to, uh, to save the banks. If only he had said, we'll do whatever it takes to enable parents to be able to look after their children, to be at home see, and look after their children. Which is, which excuse me, children. can I, I finish, think parents please? are doing a fine can job, I and I think please? we actually already have an early intervention culture. If, well, primarily to what to ordinary that, parents are doing every the way day. To they're do doing that a fine job. Is to allow uh, all parents of under three year olds to have the national average wage. Each family should have that. One or other parent, or they could share, the, could share that and uh, always be at home. Or if they don't want to look after children, they can employ a nanny. And this could be paid for by redistributing wealth, or 1% of the British you... land mass is still owned by the Ministry of Defence. <laughs> Why not sell some of that off? All right. You, you wouldn't. Okay, it's an, it, it's an interesting, unusual idea. But you have no objection to that in principle, do you? I think if... And we can't do any harm to have a, a, an intense focus on a child in its early years. Well, it, it depends. I think that there's plenty of other studies and, oh. and uh, plenty of research... One. Come on, name some studies. You keep well, saying all these studies. If, if, you obviously haven't read the literature because you can't actually name them. OK. I'm talking about sociological studies, which probably you haven't spent an awful lot of time I looking at, actually. which look at... Um, mother's experience of being mothers these days and I indicate have, indeed, I've written that extensively mothers... about that and I have read those, those studies, yes, right, with some on. of which were done in, at the University of Kent, funnily I, I, Look, I sense we're not going to get a meeting of minds here, so well, I think we're just... We're obviously not going to get a meeting of minds, but I think but... it must be possible to have a reasonable discussion about this. It must be possible to recognise the everyday experience of lots and lots of mothers and lots and lots of parents at the moment is that they are far too anxious and far too worried. Actually, what we need, I think, is a public discourse which recognises that we okay. don't have a phenomenal parenting All deficit right. in this country. Most parents are doing a fine job. Right, let's leave it there. And we thank should recognise that. Okay, thank you both very much.